In this second video in the mini series on advertising sets, we'll do a quick overview of all the settings included in the advertising sets section within the nano beacon config tool. So let's take a look at the tool. In the main window, make sure you have advertising selected. Here we can see a summary of each of the advertising set selections and settings. This includes the advertising channels, whether all three are selected, 37, 38, or 39, or whichever one is selected. We can also see the choice of the PHY that's being used, and this includes either the LE1M PHY or the LE coded PHY. We also have the advertising interval, which is the rate at which your tag will send out specific advertising set. So for each of these advertising sets, we can set a different advertising interval and have it have the tag send out the advertising packets at these specific intervals. Also keep in mind that during a single advertising interval, the tag will send out the same advertising packet on all the channels that are selected within the advertising channel se setting. Then we have the advertising data format, which can be the iBeacon format, the Eddystone format, or your own custom format. We'll dig into these shortly. Below here, you have the edit button. This is for editing the settings for each of the advertising sets, or so each advertising set will have its own edit button. We have the view raw data, which will show us exactly all the data that is included in the advertising packet. So once you have the customized data or the iBeacon format or the Eddystone with the information that you set, you'll be able to look at the raw advertising data and see what bytes are included in the advertising packet sent for each of the advertising sets that are enabled. The QR code, this is a really quick way of relaying the tags address information, the Bluetooth address, to the InPlay companion mobile app so it could quickly and easily identify your tag and filter out any other devices within the area, which makes it easy to find the tag, navigate into the tag, and look at the advertising data. Finally, we have the global trigger settings. These are the settings that allow you to set conditions for triggering all of the advertising sets. And then for each advertising set, you can enable which of these are enabled or not. We also have the customer product ID, which is a unique ID that can be assigned to each device. It can be used like a serial number, for example, to assign a unique number to each tag during the manufacturing process. Let's dig deeper into the settings for an advertising set. Once you hit the edit button, you are presented with three tabs. The first one is the advertising data, then you have the advertising parameters, and the advertising mode. Don't get overwhelmed with all the options. We'll go through each of them in detail right now. Let's start with the advertising data. So this defines the format that you choose for the advertising data included in the broadcast that is sent out by the tag. You have three options. You have the iBeacon, which is Apple's stand format for beacons. You have the Eddystone, which was defined by Google. And then you have custom, which you can define your own. You can choose any of these formats to be selected for each advertising set. So advertising set one could have iBeacon, advertising set two could have Eddystone, and three could have custom, and you can change it accordingly to your application and your requirements. Let's go into the iBeacon settings and take a look. In the iBeacon settings, you have to first set the 16 byte UUID. We talked about this in the previous video that did an overview of the advertising set settings. This is usually chosen to be a unique number across the board for all your tags, possibly within the same product family. Next, you have the major number, which you can think of as a defined region for a set of tags. You have the minor number, which usually refers to a subregion. And this could be tied to a subregion that commonly exists within the different regions. So for example, you could have a specific aisle within a supermarket assigned a specific minor number, and that will be the same across the different regions, which each have its own major number. Finally, once you set those, you have to set the measured TX power, which is the RSSI measured at one meter away from the tag. And Apple recommends taking multiple one meter measurements from different places, different areas surrounding the tag, and then using the average value of these measurements for this setting. If we go back, we can take a look. If we didn't 
enter any detailed information or any settings, then we can just hit yes to exit without saving anything. Let's go into the Eddystone settings. For Eddystone, you also have the measure TX power value. However, in this case, it is the RSSI measured at zero meters away from the tag. Then you have two main options. You have the UID frame or the EID frame. The difference between them is that the UID is unencrypted, whereas the EID is encrypted. For UID, the ID you can broadcast is comprised of two values, the 10 byte namespace and the six byte instance. You can use those similar to the iBeacon fields for setting a region and a subregion. You can also enable what's called a TLM frame or telemetry. This is used for broadcasting data such as battery voltage reading, temperature readings, and advertising packet count. For this type of TLM frame within the UID, the data is unencrypted. The TLM frames are set up to usually be interleaved within the UID frames. So keep in mind that enabling them will use up an additional advertising set. The ratio parameter shown here defines how often compared to the UID frames, the TLM frames are advertised. So for example, if we set this to one, this means that for every UID frame, one TLM frame will be advertised. If we set it to two, that means that for every two UID frames, one TLM frame will be sent out and so on. The EID frame is an encrypted frame and it refers to an encrypted identifier or ephemeral identifier. This can only be resolved by an authorized party. And here you have a choice for which key is used for encrypting the ID. The keys can be set here in the key section in the global settings. You have the option to set three keys and then use them throughout the application. We go back to the advertising settings. You can also notice that we can enable the TLM frame as well for the EID frame. And again, these are interleaved within the EID frames, so they have a ratio that we can set as well. But in this case, the TLM frames are encrypted. Then you have the custom settings. We'll take a look at this in the next video in a lot more detail. For this video, for the purposes of this video, we will be moving on to the advertising parameters and the advertising mode. So if we look at the advertising parameters, the first setting that we have is the advertising interval. Again, this is the rate at which the advertising set will send out the advertising packets. And there is an acceptable range of 20 to around 10 million milliseconds in increments of 0.625 milliseconds. The longer you set the advertising interval, the less power consumption or less power is consumed by your tag. So keep that in mind when choosing a specific advertising interval. The PHY selection, as we mentioned in the previous video, the 1M PHY is for standard BLE operation and the LE coded PHY, which is set for 125 kilobits in the IN100 settings. This is supported and it's used for long range communication or more robust communication in a noisy RF environment. And keep in mind that the LE coded PHY has to be supported by the scanning device that your application will rely on discovering the tags. Next, you have the choice for the advertising channels. So as we mentioned, the primary advertising channels for BLE are channels 37, 38, and 39. And here you have the choice to enable or disable whichever channel that you want. You have to have at least one channel enabled, obviously. Next, you have the Bluetooth device address. So here we have a couple of choices. The first one is a public address. This is a static address that is set and does not change. Then you have what's called a random address. The random has three different types. One of them is static, where you can it can define a specific address. Then next you have a private resolvable address and a private non-resolvable. In the case of a private random address, you have a couple of other options. For the resolvable one, there is the key that you define that will allow the scanner to be able to resolve this address to a meaningful address and identify the tag. In the case of a non-resolvable, the key does not apply. And for both of these private addresses, we have the renewal interval, which is the interval at which the address will change. You'll notice that when you select the private non-resolvable that the key option is grayed out to make it easier for you to know which options are available and which are not. The final tab that we have is the advertising mode. In the advertising mode, there are two specific modes at the top level. We have the continuous advertising, which 
behaves just like a normal VLE device where it advertises at each of the advertising intervals that you configured under advertising parameters. But the second mode that's more interesting is the triggered advertising. And this is very powerful because it can give you a lot more control on when the advertising packets are sent based on specific conditions that will trigger it. So as the name suggests, it's a triggered advertising. The first parameter that we have is the advertising event count. This defines how many advertising events occur once a trigger happens, and here is where you set that value. You can also enable whether the event will reset, a trigger event will reset the advertising event count. You can do this by checking the checkbox right here. For example, if you have this option enabled and say you have the advertising event count set to five, and a trigger condition is met, then at each of these five advertising events, the trigger conditions will be checked. If any of these conditions are met, then the advertising count will be reset to five and it will keep going until it hits the five count again. This means that it would send out more than the advertising event count that you have set based on whether a trigger condition is met or not during the advertising count. Now under here, we have three more options. We have what's called a single trigger, a recurring trigger, and an advertise indefinitely after the first trigger. So the single trigger configuration will configure the tag to start advertising only upon a single occurrence of a trigger condition being met. Of course, this after this single trigger occurs, the tag will continue to advertise for the number defined here in the advertising event count. However, any uh, subsequent trigger conditions will not cause the tag to advertise again. This means that you will have to reset the tag in order to trigger the advertising again based on the trigger conditions. The next one is the recurring trigger. And when this option is selected, it will cause the tag to begin advertising each time any of the enabled trigger conditions is met. This means that after the tag has finished, advertising for a trigger condition that has been met, it will start advertising again if any of the trigger conditions are met in the future. The third mode that we have is the advertises indefinitely after first trigger. This means that it will only take one trigger condition to be met and then the tag from there on will start advertising and continue advertising forever at the set advertising interval that you had set in the advertising parameter section. And finally, for each of these modes, there are different trigger conditions that can be enabled. These are grouped into two main types. We have the sensor trigger source as well as the GPIO trigger source. The sensor trigger sources are based on a set of global trigger sources, meaning that they are defined for all the advertising sets and they're not unique to any single set. The GPIO sources, on the other hand, are unique per advertising set. For the sensor trigger sources, you can enable the low and the high trigger sources for triggers two through four. And for trigger one, you only have the option to set the low trigger to be enabled or not. You also have the option to set and configure the trigger check period, which is in the unit of milliseconds, which defines when a condition will be checked for any, any of these triggers in order to trigger an advertising packet. To configure these set of global triggers, we can go to the global, uh, to the av main advertising window and hit on the global trigger settings. Here you can see that you can set the source of each of these triggers to a different type, as well as the different thresholds, whether it's the lower or the upper threshold. And then finally, if we go back, we can see that we have the GPIO trigger sources and those are the six trigger sources that are available. For quick reference, when you are going to any of the advertising sets and you're trying to set the advertising mode without having to go back to the advertising, the global trigger settings, you can see that the summary here on the right side will show you the current settings of that. So you don't have to keep going back and forth in order to find out what the values are. So I hope this gave you a good overview of all the settings within the advertising set edit mode. And in the next video, we'll be going into the custom advertising settings for the custom data format so that we can learn how to create our own data format for the advertising packets. Thank you for watching.